Hello, this is Steve Rich. I just wanted to do a video that centered on creation of file images very quickly. I wanted to touch on the topic. I'm actually very interested in doing a deeper video, if I can, on um, image creation and mounting and utilization in greater depth if possible, but we'll see if I ever get to that. But just very quickly, um, I wanted to go over the creation of ISO images and the way some CD and DVD software may burn and create images temporarily in order to create copies of CDs and DVDs. I want to display this openly just for people who've never seen it before and if they need to create an image like when you go to make a virtual machine we usually browse to an ISO image file that's already in existence on a machine. So. What we're going to do is use Ultra ISO to burn the first image, and don't laugh at me if uh, you notice that some of my versions are slightly older. What I do, I have newer versions, it's just as a habit when I set up machines, I very often grab certain versions of certain pieces of software if they just work well, and always have. So, right here is Ultra ISO, and what I have in the DVD drive is a CD of Server 2008 R2 Data Center. And what I want to do is create an ISO image so I have it available on the hard drive of my PC to use for installations in the future. So what I'm going to do is simply browse. Whoops, I'm going to go to Tools. And I'm going to say Make CD DVD Image. And it's already sensing the DVD. And that's the nomenclature for that DVD. It's an actual Microsoft uh, stamped DVD. And what I want to do is just make a standard ISO image. So I click on Make and give it a second to get started. And there's the progress bar. And I can hear the DVD whizzing. So right now what it's doing is it's creating the ISO image and it's whatever the name of the DVD is dot ISO stands for International Standards Organization. Now, in standard um, IT culture, whenever images or files are transferred around, very often to check data integrity, there's something known as a checksum that goes along with it. And it's based upon something called the MD5 algorithm. That's the message digest algorithm. It's something that was created in the early 90s for cryptography. But since then, it's been known to be a little bit weak. So its primary use now is just in popular information technology culture to verify data integrity. And what it does is it looks at something like your CD or DVD image, and it takes chunks of that image. And it does some calculating, and it generates numbers. And what it does is it just verifies the original image being of a certain profile mathematically. So it creates this mathematical snapshot of it, sort of. And then what it does is that file accompanies the image file that you download. So when you download an image file, you load it into a program like Ultra ISO or something similar, and the checksum file is compared with what the program sees of your image, and it'll just verify if the download was correct or not. It helps increase the probability that you've got every bit and byte that you're supposed to. I've seen cases where people download image files and sometimes even with some data corruption you can still do the install but the problem is you just don't know exactly what file got corrupted so even though it appears to work there might be a hidden flaw somewhere there you know waiting to pop out so anyway I'll pause this for a moment okay it appears to be taking about a good four minutes or so to do this uh, DVD and it's like two and a half gigs this image of server R2 it's finishing up and what it does is it creates an ISO image if everything is set to default with this program open it now no I don't want to open it what it does is it saves it right in the program directory for the program here let me browse to it and I'll show you Go to the local drive. And Ultra ISO is right here. And 
right here it is. So what I'm going to do is just copy this to another hard drive where I'm storing my DVD images for VMware. And I've made a directory for it already here, 2008R2 Data Center. I'll pause it again for a moment, and then we'll create a checksum. Okay, that's finishing up now. The copy is almost done. And what I want to do is I want to open this file in the 2008R2 data center folder. There it is. And what I want to do is create a checksum. So here it is. I browse to the proper ISO file, click on create. And now it's breaking the image into parts and creating a mathematical profile. And like you see, the progress bar really isn't leaping across here quickly. It's going to take a moment, so I'll pause again. Okay, it looks like it's finishing up. And it's done. And again, I believe this should be saved. in the ultra iso ultra iso no it's not it's going to be in the directory of the image that i just made yep and there it is see this md5 file there's the iso image this is a, a file that i made it's got the key for the data center uh, installation that's the md5 file so let's go ahead and check that image. We'll close this. Okay. What we do to perform a, um, a verification of data integrity here, we just browse to the ISO image that we just created. We browse to the image we just created and then we um, choose verify checksums and the checksum is right in the context with this image so what it does is it reads that checksum text file and it starts comparing the image now you can do the same thing with a DVD that you burn from this image you burn the DVD so you browse to it and um, use the checksum file to check that image I'm going to pause again Okay, the checksum is almost done. It'll flag if there's a problem found. And it's not finding any problem. We have a valid image, and it's done. So that's how we do that. Now what I want to do is use um, a favorite CD and DVD program that I use called Nero. And again, don't laugh. Just because it's older, it works. It does what I need it to. It's DVD and CD, and that's it. Nothing fancy. Why install a gig and a half of software when 200 or 300 megabytes will do? So I'm using an older version of uh, Nero 7. But what I want to show you is the Nero image, which is applicable to any version of Nero. Now, when you're handling CDs and DVDs a lot, you can scratch them. So a lot of times what I like to do is keep on file the CD or the DVD burner image that way I can just burn a new CD or DVD from the hard drive of the computer without ever using the original CD or DVD. For instance, if I've got five students that want um, a whole class that are prepared, I can put it on, the, on a CD for them and just burn five copies from an image that I've saved. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to pause this and then come back with Nero. All right, here I am. I'm firing up Nero. Nero burning ROM. And I'm going to put the DVD back into the drive. 
And what I'm going to choose to do is a DVD copy. It's hesitating to read the drive. All right, DVD. What I'm going to do is make a DVD image and it'll have the file extension .nrg, which is a Nero image file. I'm going to leave it DVD ROM ISO. And, whoops, DVD copy, I mean. You can name it and stuff like that, but I'm just going to leave it generic. And I'm going to leave it default. And again, I believe in Nero's case, it stores the image in a temp folder. If I recall, it's under documents, but I'll show you. And I believe it names, if the program is set up for default, it'll call it temp NRG or something like that, but we'll see in a moment. So as it's burning this DVD, I'll pause. Okay, this image burn is almost done. I chose um, DVD copy. What you can do with Nero is just choose to burn an image right away and it won't be a copy function. But just say you're in the middle of making a copy right now and you know you're going to be making a lot more copies. While you're burning the copy, you can take the temporary image file and you can move it and save it. Okay, it just popped the DVD out. It says it's a successful creation. Now it's waiting for the next DVD that you're going to pop in. Okay, so it finished creating the DVD image, popped out the DVD, and I believe if we look in documents, there it is, temp in image NRG. I happen to know that this image is 2008 R2, oops, R2 data center. So, Oh, nice. Okay, it's doing that. It won't let me rename it, but it will let me copy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it's still in use, so I can't rename it. Yes, yes. Software 2008 R2 Data Center. Paste. And what I'm doing is copying that temporary NRG file. And you can see it's a rather large file. It's 2.4 gigs. When it's done copying, it'll come back. Okay, so the image copy got finished. And it's still called temp image NRG. I'm going to rename it to 2008 R2 DC. Now, um, let's suppose I want to take this image and put it up on my training website and leave it as a Nero burnable or other DVD software burnable image that students can download and burn immediately to a DVD or a CD. What I can now do is use Ultra ISO to create a checksum file for this image so that when they download the image, they can verify the data integrity. So let's do that right now. So I go to file. I want to open this file this file right here and I want to create a checksum it's the energy file create okay the data integrity check is almost done so far no flags And that's it. It's done. Now you can do the same thing after you've burnt the image and you've created your CD or DVD. You apply the checksum to that CD or DVD. Same thing. Okay, so that's that. Now you can use these checksum files to verify data integrity, whether or not you're moving files up and down the internet or just transferring it from a USB stick. You may want to check the image and make sure that it got to the hard drive as accurately as possible. And that's it.